Installing the G3 Sidewinder is always best with two or even three people, but in this down and dirty presentation, I will show you how one person can effectively install the parts necessary for this boom. There are two distinct base plates for the Malibu G3 tower. When you unpack yours, the first thing to do is grab a straight edge and verify that your base plate is for your boat. The standard base plate, as you see here, is totally flat on the bottom side. There is no gap. The VLX base plate has an arc in the deck and therefore the base plate must also have a matching arc. A straight edge across will provide a noticeable gap in the middle. This is only for the VLX or the 20MXZ. All other G3 mounted boats will use the standard plate, this one here, with a straight or flat plate. Once you verify that you either have a VLX or a standard, you can proceed to install it. In this video, I am going to show you how to install the base plate by folding the tower. If you have two or even three people, I highly recommend that you leave the tower in the upright position and simply lift it up and put it back down complete. With a stand, you can release the gas strut, remove the knob, and lower the tower onto some sort of a stand to support it while you're going to install the base plate. You're going to find the white and black anchor light wire and cut it underneath the gunnel. This gives you enough room to then go back and butt splice it later. Pull the anchor light up through the base plate and out. There are three studs holding the base plate to the boat itself. Go ahead and remove those three nuts. It's a three quarter inch socket. And remove the backing plate that is underneath. If the tower is currently folded, you can remove everything without worry about the tower falling off or falling over. If you are using help, then someone should hold the tower. You'll see now that the tower has flexed slightly, and this is normal. There is a little outward pressure on the tower. If you're by yourself again, give this some thought and do it gently, but you can wiggle and move up the base plate so that it is completely out. Find a spot where it will balance, insert the base plate onto the studs, and then lower it carefully back into the pre-drilled holes in the boat. Once in, make sure to align your backing plate so your anchor light wire will come down through the, the pre-cut notch. If you install the backing plate backwards or upside down, you will not get your anchor light wire back through the proper hole. With the backing plate on, go ahead and reinstall the nuts to hold the tower base down to the boat. As I am snugging them up, I like to double check the fit against the deck of the boat. Go ahead and feed the anchor light wire back down through the hole and pull it out into the gunnel where you can then butt splice it back together. Lift the tower back into position and reinstall the gas strut. If you find it difficult to thread in the hold down bolt or G3 quick release knob, it could be that the base plate has shifted slightly in angle from the original location. Malibu has enlarged the holes nicely so that you can adjust this back and forth just by loosening the bolts a little bit and twisting the base. 
Let's install the lower bracket for the inner boom section. This will support the boom from the tower. This simply slides over the end of the boom and clamps into place. This also provides large degrees of change if the user would like a drastic change in height. A good baseline would be two to three inches from the outer end of the boom. To prepare the upper bracket for installation, go ahead and remove the four bolts holding the clamshell together. You're also going to want to loosen the three countersunk screws to allow the bracket to pivot on the clamshells. Don't remove them, just make them loose enough where it will slide back and forth fairly freely. The upper bracket mounts up tight to the top opening on the rear support of the tower. If you have speakers on your tower, you will need to remove the top speaker from the shelf and move it backwards just enough to mount the bracket. There are four machine screws inside the can holding it to the shelf and I find that seems to be the easiest method. The clamshell itself you'll see the top bolt goes right up tight to that notch. Go ahead and mount the clamshells together with the bracket on the outside and just snug it into position. There is two methods of adjustment. The bracket rotates around the clamp and the clamp rotates around the tower. To determine the proper angle and orientation of the upper bracket, we need to install the inner section. Go ahead and remove the end cap on the inner section and slide it into the receiver. You can then lay the inner section up into the bracket. The goal is to have the upper bracket both parallel to the intersection at the upper point and have it flat against the intersection as it lays back into it. So the side of the boom closest to the tower should lay flat against the back plate of the upper bracket and the side bars should be parallel as well. Once you have determined a good location, go ahead and snug everything up, check it again, and then secure it permanently. The receiver allows the inner boom section to slide back and forth, finding the perfect home in the upper brackets. The clamshell mounted up does not touch the speaker, nor does the inner section and outer section touch each other. This is a proper fit. You will want to go ahead and put all four bolts in. We use a deck mounted bow cleat to hold the bow strap in position over the top of the bow. The cleat is a very simple unit. It comes with a backing plate to reinforce underneath. Just remove the nuts and washers, drill two holes of appropriate size, put the backing plate on, and snug up the nuts. It's a very strong and simple way, and you'll find that there's actually other uses for this cleat as well. Beware of the bow light wire. Uh, the bow light wire tends to have a self adhesed uh, sticky holding the wire up underneath the deck that tends to run directly across. You may need to remove that sticky 
uh, due to center in that cleat between the upholstery and the bow light. On boats that have bow tanks, you are going to have to remove the bow tank. Not a big deal. It's just simply laid into position. If you do not have a bow tank, you can simply reach up underneath the upholstery cushion and wire, or sorry, and drill that into place. The bow strap goes around the bow eye. Bring the two loops together and simply feed them up through the middle of the cleat. Where we are not attaching to the cleat. All the strength is coming from the bow eye. The cleat is simply holding the strap over the top so that the cable has the best angle for less slack. Once again, the strap comes off the bow eye, up over the opposite side of the bow, and through the cleat. The cleat does nothing more than hold it from sliding off. With the support rod attached and pinned in place using the long pin at the top and the short pin at the bottom, you can slide the outer section of the boom into the intersection and bring the cables and straps over to the bow. There are two adjustments on the straps allowing full adjustment and I suggest that you do this one at a time. Pick a cable and adjust it to, so it's a good tight. Once that's done, you can do the second one. They are going to hook together with the carabiner. You see the two straps and two adjustment buckles. You will have to unclip them to adjust the straps. But there should be plenty of strap length for all boats. When you're all said and done, of course, slide the boom pad over the top. And that'll protect your boat. It's probably easier to see in the original prototype video that we did on the water, but tipping your boom up and down or removing it is the best done from inside the boat. Simply unclip the cables, pull the upper pin, and pull the boom up to the store. I did not have enough room in the shop to do it with the outer section in, so I took the outer section out. But even with a bimini, it actually works better with a bimini on because the support rod can just lay on top of the bimini while you do this. But you can simply tip it up, remove the outer section, and put the pin in. If you do want to remove it at any point, you can simply pull the pin, slide the boom out, and take it right off the boat.